Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. It's your girl, Sonya McQueen, with It's Your Life. What are you doing with it? So if you listen to my podcast, my last podcast, I believe it was about my anniversary um, and how it almost didn't work because of our personalities and our lack of being able to bend for each other until something, you know, really significant happened in our lives, which changed us for the better. Now, when I did that podcast, I actually did two podcasts and I couldn't understand why I did two. And they were both about our anniversary, but one led more about, uh, the young lady, <laughs> she would love that I called her that because she is, um, that told me he was going to be my husband. And the other one was more of just the story. But they were both very mundane to me. I listened to one and I was like, oh, that's horrible. And I listened to the other. I thought, oh, that's horrible. But I ended up releasing one anyhow. So I really felt led to lean more into the second part of the same story. So so what I kind of touched on but didn't really get into was what I was doing before I moved to Florida. I lived in Missouri. Um, I lived in Kansas City, outside of Kansas City. And I was the type of person almost all my life. I just never settled into any one thing. I was finally at a place in my life where I was comfortable with a job. I, I have had so many jobs, you guys. And I actually envy people in a good way that work at one place and they tell you, oh, I've worked there for 25 years. I'm about to retire. I've worked there for 35, 55. And I'm looking at them like, what the hell? The longest I've ever worked anywhere was in the military. And even then I was a part-time soldier. Um, so, and I was in the military for 16 years, but still you're talking, um, well, for a while I did work full-time, um, AGR full-time, maybe for eight out of those, eight to 10 out of those years. But anyhow, 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 um, I had written my books, right? And I was gaining a lot of popularity from my books and it was unwanted popularity. I didn't know what to do with it because I never asked for it. And I was shying away from it, but at the same time, I was living a life where I was able to go and do motivational speaking moments. I was the keynote speaker. I was invited here. I was invited there. And each time I was invited, I would do the best I could, but my insides would be screaming at me, go sit down, go sit down. This isn't for you. This isn't what you want. And there have even been times I did a horrible job because I couldn't get out of my own head. Um, I just couldn't get out of my own head. And I'll stand up there and I, I don't even know what I want to talk about because I've never been the type to write down or pray about or think about what I wanted to say until the last few years. So I get up there very lost and I'd end up talking about the book more than whatever the um, situational occurrence is. You know, maybe it's a, 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 a conference for women who gave up their kids and instead of honing in on speaking positivity to them, I just tell my story and I'd be ready to go. I hated for people to come speak to me. I felt very, uh, in my own heart, I didn't want to be there because I felt like I was the worst person to be motivating anybody else. But by chance, I was at a, an event and I met Paula. Never seen her before. She never seen me. Her niece seen me and was like, oh my God, it's Sonia and la 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 la. And she wanted to meet me. So Paula was like, okay, I don't know her, but she brought her over to meet me. Paula ended up buying one of my books. From there, I signed the book. Paula finds me on social media. And Paula is worse than me on social media. All she posts is in our family prayer group. You don't see Paula posting millions of pictures and and on uh, social media telling you about her whole day, pictures of what she's eating the day, what she's going through, none of that. She's worse than me. But Paula found me on social media and she sent me an inbox message and asked me to lunch. And I declined. I just told her my calendar was full and it, it pretty much was. 
you know, I, I did have a full-time job on top of the book uh, signings, on top of being a motivational speaker or a keynote speaker or invited to be on the radio or whatever. And I had a tweet still, my youngest. She was still living at home, so my plate was full. I had taken off, um, I hope I don't lose anybody, but I had taken off three days for my full-time job to move. I lived in a beautiful condo, a three-story condo right next door to my favorite person in the world outside of my kids, my brother. And um, I was renting the place and <laughs> I don't know, I took three days because I had found a house. And I wanted to move into this house and I applied for the house. I got the house. It was a beautiful house, um, a white, just a beautiful house in a beautiful area. So I took off to pack up all my stuff and put it in storage. And once it was in storage, I went to my friend Paul's house and I was sleeping in um, on his couch, I believe. Even though he had a spare bedroom, I preferred to sleep on the couch. Uh, maybe Tweet had the room. I don't really remember, but. Anyhow, when I went back to work, you know, I got a tap on my shoulder and it was HR saying, hey, come with us. So there was a whole bunch of people walking. So I get in line, you know, I'm walking with everybody else trying to see what they're going to introduce to us. Well, they introduced our walking papers. They released either 24 or 27 of us that day um, painfully because the company was losing money. It was immediate. They allowed us to go back to our desk. When we got there, there were already boxes for us. So we packed up our boxes and I go to my car and I was thinking, wow, I've never been fired in my life. So I pack up and I'm driving and my phone rings and it's the people, um, the realty company. And they start off with, with we are so sorry. And I was like, okay, the area I was moving into, you had to make. A certain amount of money which I didn't know and I don't know if they didn't know or if they were oblivious to what I made but they said I made too much money so I was not getting the house that I thought I was going to move into um, and if you're just patient with me there's there's an end to all this so I had pulled over you know my my white Mazda tribute and I pull over and I'm like are you serious? They're like, oh, we're so sorry. We're going to give you back all your money, your deposit, your, your everything. We are so sorry. So I'm just sitting there thinking, what the heck? So I call the guy who owned the condo I lived in. Now, I'm sure he was fit to be tied with me because I hardly ever paid my rent on time, which makes no sense to me why I was so irresponsible with all the money I was making. But I'm sure he was very happy to see me moving out. And um, I called him to say, hey, listen, the house I was going to move into fell through. I need to stay in the condo. And his exact words were to me, I'm sorry, I've already re-rented the condo and the people are moving in on the first. There's no coming back. So I'm thinking, oh my God, I am living on my friend's couch. I have no home. I just lost this full-time job, which gave me the majority of my income. Jesus, what now? So I call my brother and I tell him what's going on. And he's like, well, you know, Tweet can stay here. Um, no problem. And I'm sitting there in a the parking lot. My phone rings. No joke. It's Paula. This lady I don't know, who I met one time, she bought my book in person, and who inboxed me once. It's Paula. I had given her my, my phone number on Messenger. And she asked me, do you think you could do lunch now? And I just started laughing. I was like, well, I guess so. I don't have nothing else to do. So we planned on meeting up the next day for lunch. This is an important story, you guys, because it shows how being obedient can shift the trajectory of the rest of your life. How listening and believing, if you're a believer, can make the rest of your life that much better. So I met Paula for lunch the next day. You know, I didn't know her. She had asked me while we spoke on the phone if I could bring her nine copies of both of my books. Both. She wanted nine sets. She wanted to give them out. She said she read my book 
and she was absolutely floored and how she thought that this was a story she wanted to share with her family. So I had brought the 18 books, you know, one of uh, nine of each to her. They were in a box and I met her in the parking lot first. It was cold. It was November, hugged her up. It was November, the beginning of December, but we go in and we sit down. Now, mind you, I don't know this lady and she doesn't really know me. So I'm looking at her and she's shaking a lot, shaking. Her hands are shaking and, and, um, you know, we ordered some drinks. I think I ordered tea, like always, and she probably ordered a soda pop. But she reaches in her purse and she pulls out this beautiful little bag. And um, it's like one of those Asian bags that you buy little things in if you go overseas or something. But I open the bag and it's got a gorgeous necklace in it. And she said, I was led to give you this and I told her, well, I can't take this. You know, I'm thinking, I don't even know you, woman, but this is a beautiful necklace. It was a gold necklace with diamonds on it. So I went to slide it back to her, and she said, no, God led me to give you that. You're going to wear it on your wedding. And I, you know, on the inside, I'm laughing because I'm thinking, yeah, I just broke up with the dude I was dating about a month ago. So wedding is not my future. And it's what she said next that changed my life. She said, well, let me back up before I tell you what she said. Before I got fired and everything, I kept thinking, I'm going to move. I'm going to move from Kansas City. I'm going to move to another state where I'm going to become stable and stay there and do something great. I used to say that all the time, but it was never the right time. It was never the right time. Oh, I've got this. I've got this job. I've got kids. I've got... I just couldn't see me really doing it. It was just a pipe dream. So now back to me and Paula. She says to me, it's time for you to leave. And I was like, what? <laughs> she was like, yeah, it's time for you to leave Missouri. Um, it, it's time for you to go. And I'm looking at her and she said, God said he cleared your plate. You have no more excuses for staying. I don't Facebook my thoughts, my feelings my issues, my circumstances. I Facebook pictures sometimes of my grandkids, me and my kids at the time. Um, hardly ever even me on a date. Just simple stuff and always positivity. Always. So nobody ever knows really what's going on in my life. I'm very private. Very private. So her saying that caused me to start crying because I had been telling people I was going to move, but my plate was too full. And those are my exact words. And he did empty my plate. I had no book signings coming up. I had no speaking engagements coming up. I just lost my job. All my stuff was in storage. My daughter was over my brother's house. I'm sleeping on a friend's couch. I had no home to move into. I had nothing but time. It was probably December once again when she said these words to me. And I stopped being nervous sitting with her, but I was like, how do you know that? And she said, you know, I struggle sometimes with telling people what the Holy Spirit is saying to me because they think I'm crazy or they dismiss it. But he was on me so bad about talking to you. I just had to tell you and, and let you do with it what you want. I was so moved. Now, you guys, I've never believed in um, prophecy. I never believed in it. I thought it was a hoax. I used to hate seeing people run around church touching people and they're falling out everywhere. Or you got a whole group of people speaking in tongues. That used to throw me off because I thought, I thought the Bible said if you speak in tongues, there had to be an interpreter there, but everybody's speaking in tongues and nobody's interpreting, and I don't know what you're saying. But anyway, I never believed in prophecy until Paula. There's no way in the world. My brothers didn't even know I wanted to move. Um, the only person who knew so far that I had lost my job was one brother, and it was just amazing what she said to me. So much so I was gone by February. I had been to Florida twice and just thought it was absolutely beautiful. I loved the trees and I thought, you know what? 
If I ever have an opportunity to move there, I'm going to move. Well, I knew somebody here who allowed me to come stay with them. So I did. And that's a story in itself I'm not going to get into, but I did. And I stayed with them for just a couple of months. And then I got my own place. I got a nine to five. I, I decided I did not want my books to be sold anymore. So I pulled them off the shelves. I just didn't feel like I was mentally ready. It was too emotional for me. Um, I still hadn't healed myself to be out speaking to other people. So I stopped speaking. I stopped doing everything. I stopped writing. I stopped doing everything. Just threw myself into this nine to five. Well, I meet Q. And he asked me out on a date. We had our first date April the 30th, 2014. Before Q, the guy I was staying with, um, we weren't really dating. We were trying to see because he had liked me for so long and I just didn't feel him like that. But I felt like, well, Paula did tell me my husband was here. I got to open my heart and my mind to the possibility just because I'm not feeling this guy like that doesn't mean this isn't who God has ordained for me. So, you know, we tried to date or whatever, and I just didn't like him that much. <laughs> but one day Paula calls me. I had never told anybody about this guy. The only people who knew about me and this guy were one of my kids and um, his sister and his mother. So Paula calls me one day and said, are you dating somebody? And I laughed and I said, yeah, kind of. And she said, oh, okay, well, congratulations. And so I told her just a little bit about him and we changed subjects and started talking about other things. Now, mind you, I barely knew Paula still. I met her. I'm just going to stick with the beginning of December. I had lunch with her. I may, maybe spoke to her once or twice again. And I moved to Florida. She became part of my, my group. I used to, you know, the newsletters and all that. She became a big part of that. And I used to have these conversations with everybody um, bi-weekly. And she was part of that. But nothing really personal, too personal for her to know about this guy. So anyway, we just talked, talked, talked. And um, in that conversation, and that was that. So when I moved out of this guy's house, you know, I, I wiped my hands of him. He was exactly who I thought he was, and he definitely was not sent to me. And so I move into the place. I meet Q. He asked me out on a date. I go on a date with him, and we were together ever since. April 30th, 2014. We never separated from that time. We became a couple around May, and that was that. September, he threw me a surprise engagement party. 2015, we became engaged. And the necklace Paula gave me. I knew whatever I wore when we got married, it was going to fit around that necklace. She told me before I even came, your husband is where God is going to send you. And she also told me everything that I was supposed to do. My purpose was here. People started recognizing me, asking me to come to speak, you know, little engagements here and there, here and there. And, and I would go and I would speak. And I started writing a little bit again. And I started doing things and I started growing in my job and elevating and just becoming this new creature. This new creature. You guys, when I tell you doing that one little thing totally changed my life. Let's put aside the necklace that I broke and broke down crying when it broke. Um, and I called Paula and I said, oh, my God, the necklace broke. I can't find anybody to fix it because it had all these little, you know, some necklaces, if you bend them a certain way, if they break, you, you'd, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm going to put a picture with this podcast of the kind of necklace it was. And no jeweler could fix it. And she told me, calm down. It's not even about the necklace. Wear what you want to wear. It was just about God letting you know what was in your future, not about the necklace. I still have the pieces of the necklace to this day, um, which was, what, 12, 13 years ago, 12 years ago. So me making this move 
was the biggest thing I've ever done in my life because it was bigger than meeting a husband. It was finding my comfort. It was moving away from what was expected of me from other people who didn't really know my struggles and moving into a space where God could talk to me and I could hear him clearly. It was about releasing people from my life that were stagnating me. And I was allowing it because I wanted to be stagnated. And I was probably doing the same to them. Talk about the same things, the same people, the same issues. And nobody was speaking about growth and moving forward. Here we are all are 30 and 40 and 50 something year olds still talking about the same foolishness every, every time we got together. There was no speaking about what are you going to do with your life? You are at this point, make a move, make a decision. There was none of that. But I was able to move away from those just standing still in mud water or quicksand conversations and move into more powerful, godly conversations. I was able to start having my, I started having a monthly meeting with just women and those meetings were so powerful. I mean, they were absolutely powerful. Now, in the midst of this, I did stop doing a few things that I just didn't feel like I was ready for. I stopped my motivational monthly newsletter, which was extremely powerful. Um, there was no reason for me to stop it other than selfishness. I stopped speaking, as I told you. I had pulled my books off the shelves. I wanted to concentrate on me. And doing that, I did. I became a better person. I became a better family member, a better mother mentally, um, a, a better woman all the way around. And I felt bad for every guy I dated before I moved because I dated some really good guys. I just wasn't ready. I had been through so much. I didn't trust that people loved me for me. And so once a guy told me he loved me, <laughs> I would know that relationship was going to end soon. I just didn't feel like I deserved it. I moved to Florida and learned my worth, that I more than deserve love. And not only that, I learned to let my barriers down and allow people to come in and embrace me. Giving up my son for adoption and the way my family treated me and the way I was talked about and discarded scarred me, y'all. It scarred me. And it made me feel like if your own family doesn't love you like this, why would people who barely know you or they're just meeting you at this part of your life, why would they love you? But I found out why. Because I'm worth it. I'm worth it. Those untruths that people told about me do not define me. I'm so much bigger than that. The definition of me is what comes out of my kids' mouths when they talk about me. They're so proud that I'm their mom. What my husband says about me, he is so proud. He cracks me up. He'll uh, Somebody will give him a compliment about me, and he'll say, yeah, I'm a lucky man. And it's, it's a running joke now, but I know he really feels it. He really feels like he hit the jackpot. When I know I hit the jackpot. These kids I have, God just blessed me abundantly with. Yeah, it was so much bigger than moving to Florida and finding my Boaz. It was finding Sonia. She was lost. She was sinking quickly. It was the ability to re-release my books, which I just did like a month ago. It was my ability to love myself and find my way and find my purpose. This helping the homeless the needy, the forgotten, the disenfranchised, the children, the, the elderly, all these people is my purpose. Giving people a voice, being able to tell people, don't treat other people like this. Give people the ability to apologize. Don't turn your back on people so fast. I know what it feels like. And I'm here to tell you guys, when somebody has prophecy for you, 
don't close that door. You run through it because me listening to that lady sitting across from me with the shaky hands has pushed me into my forever life. Now, I am not sure if I've already said this part. If I did, I'm just reiterating just so you can get the full effect if I didn't. Okay. When Paula called me and asked me, was I dating someone? And I said, yeah. And she said, congratulations. That was it for that whole conversation. Never asked me another question about that guy. But when I first started dating Q, which nobody knew about, once again, nobody knew I was dating Q. We had not um, posted any pictures together or made it public or anything, but we had officiated the fact that we were uh, in a committed relationship, trying to see where it was going. She calls me again. I'm, I'm driving on my way to see him. And she asked me, Sonia, are you in another relationship? And of course, I paused. And I asked her first, was she stalking me? Then we laughed. I said, well, actually, I am. And her exact words were, that's him. That is going to be your husband. That is who God purposed for you. It is is mind-blowing what God will show some people when he knows you're not going to do right. Because I still hadn't made it to the point where I loved myself enough to think I deserved somebody to love me wholeheartedly. But God knew. He knew, number one, I would listen to what she was saying and I would believe. And it was the beginning of me it was almost the beginning, it, it was a little bit before that, of me starting to grow confidence and love for Sonia, for self, for me, the way God intends for it to be. He doesn't intend for you to put yourself down or to see yourself as less than or to let other people's words and actions hold you in a chokehold and you start believing the naysayers, and the negativity about yourself. That's not how your life is intended to be. And if you have done something wrong, let's just say you have been on drugs, or you were a thief, or you were this, or you were that. Every person you meet has been something that they're not proud of, or done something that they shouldn't have done. Don't hold that against yourself. You have the right to apologize and move on. I've said that before. You live your best life on purpose. You live your best life on purpose and do not close the door to what God sends you. Don't close that door. The best thing I can say is he'll give you another opportunity because I'm sure Paula wasn't my first opportunity. She just came stronger and harder and made me open my eyes and realize I have worth to somebody out there. How many of you know the biblical story about Saul, later named Paul, and Barnabas? It was that interaction between Saul and Barnabas that pushed Saul, Paul, into his forever happiness. It was that friendship, that camaraderie, that connection that changed the trajectory of the rest of his life. That's what you may be one person away from. Me listening to Paula and taking what she said to heart changed the trajectory of the rest of my life. Is there somebody that has said something to you, something you've seen. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a prophet. It could be that one friend away. It could be somebody already in your life, that one family member away, that one stranger away, that one boss away, that one spouse words of encouragement away from pushing you into a better life. I'm telling you, sometimes all you got to do is step out of yourself and be willing, be willing and open to the positivity of another person. Don't be closed-minded, all right? It might 
be the difference between your tomorrow happiness and your tomorrow still wallowing in whatever you're wallowing in now. All right, it is me. It's your girl, Sonia McQueen, with It's Your Mind, Your Body, Your Choice. Uh, you can reach me at Sonia M at ledbymotivation.com or ledbymotivation07 at gmail.com. Hit me up. Let me know what your one thing is that changed the trajectory. It changed the course. It changed the direction of your life for the better. Um, or let me know what you've done for somebody else. And as always, if you want to receive our free newsletter, send me a message and it's as good as done. Have a great day on purpose and do things in your life that are purposefully positive.